morning, Aldrin, and uh, to our viewers. Uh, you are right, uh, the, this operation started very early this morning. Police uh, started, of uh, course, mobilizing, gearing up uh, uh, ahead of uh, the eviction from around half past three this uh, morning. Um, a lot of media arrived around four o'clock as we started observing um, the large police contingent that uh, has arrived here. And I really just want to walk around to show you what is happening here. It's a hive of activity as, of course, uh, the police, home affairs officials, and, of course, uh, some social workers from uh, the Department of Social Development. They've been hard at work since early this morning uh, trying uh, to obviously evict uh, the uh, group that is here. Many of them saying that uh, they don't have options. They also do not want to go to Lindella, saying that this is as good as a death sentence if they should go to uh, Lindella. Um, I'm joined here by one of the ladies. Uh, you can see um, she's very emotional, and that is the scene. Uh, how are you feeling? My son is collapsing, man. How are you feeling this morning? I'm not going to Lindela. I'm not. I'm so upset. One police tell me why you doesn't go to your country. Which kind of the country? Someone can tell someone like that. Eh? But to be a refugee is a crime in this country. Eh? I come from Lindela. The, the immigration themselves bring us here. So today they ask us to go again to that Lindela. So if you're not going to Lindela, what are your options? If you're not going I'm to not Lindela. I'm not going in there in the prison. I didn't come in this country to, to, be, to, be, to be arrested. Eh? What crime I done? What crime I done? You're saying your son has collapsed? What's happening He's in there? collapsed. He just... These things, we are not used to this. We are not used to this, please. What are you, what's happening with your son in, in there? No, he's, he just collapsed. He just collapsed there. Well, Aldrin, these are some of these scenes that are playing out here. Traumatic scenes, sensitive scenes, emotional scenes, as, of course, uh, the refugees have to face an unfortunate fate. Many of them do not want to leave. They were hoping that the UN would actually assist them with their demands to be taken to a third country. They were also saying that they are even happy with being redeployed or taken to refugee camps. Some were saying that they were willing to go to even Zimbabwe. Some even so desperate saying that just take us to the border. We will walk to the refugee camp in Zimbabwe. But of course, uh, the UN has uh, told us that their hands are cut off, in particular after the court order that has been obtained based on the municipal bylaws that have been, of course, violated. Understanding that uh, this group of refugees have been living on the pavement of uh, the offices here of uh, the UN here in Brooklyn, Pretoria. And it is on that premise, that basis, that uh, the city of Tswane and some of the homeowners in this area obtained the court order that, of course, sanctioned their eviction uh, today and uh, police are of course given strict instructions to make sure that uh, this court order is obeyed it is enforced it is honored but uh, the human rights of these uh, refugees that remains the se sensitive issue their dignity the small children that uh, of course are part of this process the women that are also left emotional you've heard many of them saying that uh, they would rather die before they leave but of course uh, some of them saying that right now they don't have much options they have to let's just hear what this lady is saying the judge he take the side for brooklyn because he's living in brooklyn even the judge when we go to appeal the judge he tell us is a south african he going to stand for a country he didn't say concern about us he didn't look about human being he took the side for a country what are we going to say there's no justice there's no democracy even there was democracy in south africa or oh, the really justice this is can't happen like this they're supposed to look the better solution this is not a solution what is a better solution ma'am the better solution is is the one it's not south africa who they are carrying the the refugee in africa we are not asking that canada or america the way they are talking 
It's UNC, it's them who are controlling all the camp. There is the camp around South Africa. But the UN is not protecting you right now. They yes, have, the they said, not, they said. It's they, not a protecting us, yes. It's not a protecting us. For How do you feel about that? We feel so very bad. It's so bad. We don't have anyone to protect us. Even the government can't protect us. Even UNC. But the fact that you've been living on this pavement with small children for so long, there's no water, there's no proper toilets, you know, it's a humanitarian crisis. Are you not concerned about that? It's not us, it's not us we are asking to come to this place. It's the Oma face, the self Oma face we get the decision. Oma face, he brought us in Lindela. Oma face, I'm talking of front of Oma face, they are here. It's Oma face on 2019, on 15th September. Oma face, who took us, he brought us in Lindela. They tell us, them, they just help because according to the law for South Africa, women and children, they can't be in the street. That one day, they help us to look solution with the UNCR. We live there almost four years, since 2019 until 10 May. The Home Affairs, the Minister of Home Affairs, he get a decision. He said they must take us out. He, those bulangets we have, is the Home Affairs we give us. It's the bulangeti for Lindela and the mattress for Lindela. They say, them they try to help UNCR, but UNCR, he didn't take, yeah, 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 the decision. He didn't take a, a, a work. That's when Omar first he get decision. He said he take us in the street. He coming to leave us also in the street. There's a footage there around here. It's the immigration car we protest here. It's not us. We was waiting there, Lindela. No matter what the treatment we found in Lindela, what he was so very bad. We was in the peace. We was waiting in the patience to wait for the, the right solution. I just want to come in. You don't want to go to Lindela, I understand. I don't want to go back to Lindela. Why to not? Do what? Because we lived there three years. The minister said, or oh, UNC, he don't, is not, the minister of Home Affairs, he said, this is not your business, it's not your, your job. Because Home Affairs is only a work to give the paper. What we're asking is for UNC. You also don't want to go back into the South African communities. You do not want to be no, reintegrated. Don't you don't want to go to Lindela. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do now? Because here, they are going to remove you. You see, police are not going to have any resistance. You don't want to go to Lindela. You do not want to go back into South African communities. Mm -hmm. Where are you going after this? We're just running small, small. I don't know till when. I don't know where they're going to die or what. It's better we must die in front of everyone than to put us in the construction camp to go and kill us there. We're living with a snake then Lindela. There's no electricity. The criminal, they are living better than us. We we are not a criminal. We didn't do anything. Where are you from? You Which country are you from? I am from Congo. When you go to Lindela, all the section they have electricity, they have a good condition. But us, they put us in the peace section, they cut electricity, there's no water. And they traumatizing us every day, day and night. Even Lindela was a good place. No one can do And the ladies die there. Even the clinic for Lindela, they don't want even us to be in the clinic of Lindela because we are dog we are animal let us to die in the street when we're yes. walking it's better everyone they see those dogs they are die when did you arrive in south africa how did you arrive in south africa i arrived here in south africa in 2008 i was inside the truck and just i was running and the truck it took me i don't know i found it myself here in south africa even that truck he was leaving me in zimbabwe i can be in zimbabwe you even have... the truck he was leaving me in Zambia. Do you have the right papers? I understand that you're an I asylum seeker. I am my asylum seeker. I have it. Even my child is born here in South Africa. So basically it means that you are legal in South Africa as you have yes. asylum papers. I have my asylum papers. All right. Thank you so much. Because Aldrin, as I said, very sensitive, very emotional. Um, but police have to do their job. The court order has to be enforced. It is a conundrum that is playing out here, an emotional one uh, for that matter. Um, uh, many of, of course, the people that are resisting are the women who are saying that Lindela is not where they would be going to again. Um, uh, you can see their children also helping with uh, the packing. Very, very sensitive. Um,
I don't know when last have I seen so many police nyalas. We counted perhaps about six police nyalas that are lining this uh, street. Here's another lady that uh, has been very fierce, saying that she will not go to Lindela. Yeah, because I can't go and burn myself when I, I, I see that place is danger. I can't. I can't go back to Lindela. I was just looking the way I can go. But to go to Lindela, I don't want. He asking us to live here. We are live. And then after that, I will start following these people because of my son. I don't know where my son is until now. So we don't want to make any fighting with the government. We're just living in peace. Yeah, we're just living in peace. How are you feeling? I can see that you are touched. You are heartbroken. Yeah, I'm feeling bad for, for this country and this people here because it's working here because of the refugees nothing can do people just come with a gun with the everything we are not in the war we're running out to our country because of the war here ne, we just come and look peace but here is no peace to this country better as we can leave this country you are originally from burundi yes. tell us more about your situation why you ran from burundi and how you arrived here you told me a very traumatic story yes. just repeat that for me I living to my country 2002, yes, because my parents and my family was been dying to 1995 with the war, 10% one day, and then I start running a different country until when I say let me go and stay in South Africa the way I can get the peace. But I reaching here is no any peace the one I get. It's just why I decided to live in this country. Before you arrived here at the UN offices, where were you living? I was living in Sunnyside. So why did you run away from Sunnyside? I ran in Sunnyside because police, police entered to my room, to my place, the way I was staying. He just came and stealing the money. And then it was too much things for the police. He started to... I go to the way you were involving the police near to Shubat, one police told my sister, because of the things, don't go to following that things. You're gonna die for that things. Even my name is there to the Shubat, you know the way office Shubat is for the way you can... Uh, and, and Do you have asylum papers? Do you have your yes. documents? I have it, it's already expired, yes. I so have. does that not make you illegal now in the country? Illegal. So does that not make you more vulnerable? You are more in danger if you will be wandering in the streets since you do not want to go back to Lindela? No, it's the same. Because even if I'm here also, I'm not the same. The way I can go, it's only God the one can help me for that. Because I don't have any news to... Are you not scared that you'll be arrested and I'm you will scared. go to prison instead of Lindela? Even if you... you're asking me to go to, to the prison. It's no difference for the prison and go to Lindela, it's the same thing. But when you go to prison, you'll be charged, you'll be facing a criminal offence, no it's different. No problem, because I, I know myself, I don't have any criminal. But you don't have the right documentation, you'll the be on the streets. One, the, if, 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 the one I have it, in, I get to all my affairs, is expired when I was in Lindela. And I don't want, the what you can do, you can arrest it at the end, it's going to be what? You're going to leave him to Lindela to die. If he's, he's doing it like that, I'm fine for that. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Aldrin, the lawyers for human rights are also here. Here's another lady that's uh, been very fierce. You can see this big suitcase that uh, she's uh, pushing. Teresa, how are you feeling this morning? Very good. Very happy. With you happy? Less South Africa. I can see that you are sad, my sister. She's very upset. Very, very upset. We're trying to find the lawyers for human rights. They were just around the corner just to find out, you know, what are they making of what is happening here? Of course, you would understand, uh, Aldrin, they are here to obviously uh, protect the human rights of uh, this uh, group of refugees as they face eviction. Um, you can also see the street is packed with uh, police and uh, home affairs officials it's a joint operation a lot of social workers from social development Gauteng emergency services are also here on uh, of course uh, high alert there's a lot of them up the road with uh, ambulances in case anything happens um, uh, here 
So a uh, lot of enforcement, everybody ready in case anything happened. I have found the lawyers for human rights. Uh, Louise Duplessis joins me right now. Louise, it's been a very hectic day, morning. Since very early, we've been here watching the developments. Um, what have you observed and what do you make of what's happening here? Well, I think this is, this is exactly what we try to avoid because I don't think this is very human what's happening here. And there was that mediation order. Part of the order was let's have a mediation session where everybody is involved, also the UNCHR, um, to try to find a better solution. And that mediation section was just, just ignored by everyone. Everybody's talking about a better solution. What yeah. is that solution in these circumstances? Well, I think if at least what I know is if people better understand what's their options and that they, for example, they will say they want to go to um, Botswana. Botswana doesn't have um, um, refugee laws in place. So I don't think people are always aware what is the options because at this stage they say they will go to the nearest border and jump the border and stay in another country as long as they can just get, get out of South Africa. But many times, you know, um, having mediations like that is coming up with some sort of solution. There's also, you can pull people around the table that's better than what's happening here now. Um, exactly what the solution is, nobody says this is an easy thing and that there's a, you know, a screaming solution here. But this is definitely not the solution now. You're a, you, you are a lawyer for human rights. The refugees here, they are fearing for their lives should they go to Lindela. And they're saying yeah. their human rights have been violated repeatedly. And they would rather face the dangers on the streets of South Africa than go back there. Yes. Have you been to Lindela? Have you heard their testimonies? Um, what is it that you can share with us about the reality in Lindela? I've been at Lindela once, long time ago, because, it's, because my colleagues are actually dealing with this. But whenever you talk to any of my colleagues who's, who's doing refugee and migrant work, they will tell you that Lindela is horrible and um, it's not and it's definitely not a place for children it's far away it's very difficult for people to get to shops and the children also don't go to school and that's a very big concern could it be worse than what we see here on the pavements of uh, the UN offices how they've been living in these makeshift uh, structures with uh, no facilities no services could Lindela be worse than this? Well, according to them, it is. I, you know, I don't know, but that's according to them, they're better off here than being in Lindela. I also think they have found, some of them did find some little odd jobs to do, and in Lindela it's not possible because Lindela is too far away from Krugersdorp. Um, so there's maybe, you know, there's a lot of things that one must weigh up, but they definitely think it's better to be here. You know. There are some of them whose documents have expired. I spoke to. Uh, a lady just now, yeah. her asylum papers have expired. Yeah. Uh, one would assume that makes her more vulnerable, um, wandering these streets with expired documents. Definitely. I think one of the big problems what I heard from, again, from my colleagues dealing with these issues and from them is that home affairs is not helping them. So they go to home affairs, they go time and time, and we all know what's going on at home affairs. There's a lot of corruption taking place there, and they do not want to help. This is a xenophobic attitude from home affairs as well. Um, that is definitely preventing these people to get their documents in order. The children, that's our biggest concern. Yes. Everyone here, including the police, yeah. you know, government officials, home officials, everybody is worried about the children. They are very small children here, yes. babies as well. Yeah, I see a baby's been are you, are you satisfied with how they are being treated? Are there proper provisions made to protect the children? I hope the state attorney, uh, the meeting that we once attended, the state attorney managed to get 20 social workers together. Exactly what the process is, I don't know. I know they're going to take them around to the church now and process them there because we're also worried that these children are just going to disappear. So hopefully the state attorney and these social workers have a proper process in place. And that is the concern. I've spoken to two ladies who have already talked about that, that they've lost their children mm -hmm. through the very same processes. Yes. When they were running uh, from their countries, they lost their child children. One said that her child stayed uh, behind um, in uh, the DRC. Uh, the other one said she does not know where her yeah. child is. Yeah. And some fearing that the same thing will happen here in South Africa. Yeah. Their children might get lost in the system. Now we are extremely worried about that. But I know for a fact that the state attorneys did put in quite an effort with the social workers to ensure that there is a proper process. I hope it's going to work. Yeah. What are the other remedies to protect them? Is there any other way 
um, for those who won't be in Lindela or everybody? Is there anything that uh, the lawyers for human rights will be doing that is tangible? Because one must yes. also say we're not seeing that tangible muscle yes. from um, human rights to stand up for them. You know, the thing is, is the one problem was is that these people didn't want to be represented in court. And I think if they wanted to be represented, if they had representation in court, it, it would have maybe looked a bit different because one could tell these stories to the court. And we couldn't do that because the court ordered us, lawyers from Ross, to be a, a friend of the court, Amicus. So we were very limited in the information that we could share with the court. Um, what, what's the tangible solution? It is these people want to be resettled because of the xenophobic um, attacks in South Africa. That is the solution, but it's very difficult um, to be resettled. I don't know exactly what the requirements of the UNCHR is, but I know it's, not, it's something that they don't easily do. But that is basically what the solution will be. They're also very, very angry that uh, the UN, which they thought was going to fight for them, is stepping back, is taking a safe posture. We spoke to the UN. The UN literally said that their hands are cut off. This is a court order. It has to be enforced. They can't um, take them to other countries either because that is not their jurisdiction. What do you make of the criticism that the UN is failing to protect the refugees? You know, I think it, it would have gone far if the UN was more involved in this process and at least attended some conversations with them. I think it might have made a difference um, if, if the UN played a bigger role. I know they, they're also limited in what they can do, of course, but they are the, and they are the custodians of the refugees. So one would expect that they will be, there will be more involvement from their side. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, of course, uh, Louise uh, Duplessis, she is a lawyer for human rights that is very closely involved with uh, the refugees that have been living here and she has walked this journey with them um, trying to obviously give them the necessary counseling here's a gentleman that is in this uh, van let's see if maybe we can get a voice sir I'm you here. are in this van yes my name is kanana i'm a god prison wamadu i resume i call that uh, lady again i'm a god nilok again two years before Corona, I'm a god Nilok again. Today, I'm a god Ben Nilok. What happened? He raised me that Mama um, Ewen Shal from Cameroon. I'm a gay, I'm, 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 I'm go again Nilok prison. Why are you going to prison? Why not just, uh, you know, go back into the South African community? You've got the option to be reintegrated. Where, where communities in South Africa are going to go? Where problem for community? I'm come here for xenophobia. I'm come here xenophobia. Attack. You see here the head. What happened here? The head. So I to attack. Huh? Here. Where here? You see, you see me. Attack is xenophobia. That I'm come here. He went to protect me. He went to put me in jail. Every day jail. Every day jail. So you'd rather go to prison? I mean, I go. I, again, I'm going to prison. Where the lawyer, the email right? Where the lawyer, email right? Do you have children? I'm not children, children, the Congo. I'm a papa, he died. He died for the uh, general, he died from coma. Where could I do? I'm a come here, problem, Congo. Huh? All right, thank you so much. Uh Aldrin, the majority of the refugees here are from the, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. A lot of them, there are some who are from Burundi, Uganda and Kenya, but I would say about 80% are from the DRC. We heard a very emotional um, feedback from one of the ladies who also refused to go to Lindela, who told us uh, about uh, her views. She sounded very informed and educated. And basically what she was saying is that uh, the DRC is a mineral rich country on the African continent. She was also saying that she believes that it's the richest country in the world. And uh, however, the people of the DRC continue to suffer, continue to be persecuted. She was also talking about orchestrated war in that country so that uh, some countries can exploit 
the minerals of uh, the DRC and some of them of course are paying this hefty price where they have to run away from war and come to countries in uh, like South Africa but still even here um, they don't find relief so she was just appealing on African leaders to start protecting the minerals of this continent saying that the day that Africa's minerals are well protected and benefit the people of Africa that's the day that the suffering will end and that is when we will start seeing um, you know less of foreign nationals refugees running to countries such as South Africa where they also have to face a lot of challenges as they fight for their lives, fight for their dignity. So these are the sentiments that are playing out as uh, D-Day, of course, is uh, facing these uh, desperate and vulnerable refugees and their children following the court order that, of course, has been obtained. We've also throughout the week spoke to some of the residents in the area just to find out what are their feelings as this is playing out. Of course, uh, some were saying that uh, their hearts are burning for uh, the refugees. They have over the years supported them with food, uh, you know, blankets, um, given clothes to their children but others were having none of it. They were saying that this is a humanitarian crisis that is playing out here. It uh, has, uh, of course, uh, you know, tarnished the image of this uh, area. Of course, you would know that Brooklyn is one of the affluent areas in Pretoria East. Um, it's one of those areas where people would say it's where the rich reside. So many of them saying that uh, the value of their properties have been badly affected by this group of uh, refugees that lived here on this particular stretch of road outside the offices of uh, the uh, UN saying that it's time for them to go. Now the court order of course was um, with the help of the city of Tswane and some of those homeowners in this particular area who are saying that uh, the refugees do not belong here. This is an abnormal situation that uh, is compromising this particular community. They were also saying that this is not how small children should be, um, of course, raised. They were in particular also worried about the fact that winter is here and the freezing cold of winter is setting in, uh, worried about the health of the children and the fact that there are no sanitation facilities here, no water, um, saying that this is a huge health risk you can see this lady here in front of me upset but of course struggling to get her things together and you know make her way make her way to wherever she's going i'll try and catch up with her she's moving quite fast i want to find out where is she going um, as she is dragging her belongings here is she going to lindela or has she decided to be reintegrated into community? Mama, thank you so much um, for joining us right now. I know this is very, very hard for you. Yes. How are you feeling and where are you going? Sis, I don't know. I don't know that time. Where I'm God, he knows. You're not but, going to Lindela? Uh, Linda, we come from Lindela City. We are suffering. The kids, they are suffering. We can go back. Sis, he's not right. I don't know that one. I'm going, the way I'm going. God. Are your papers in order? Yes. Yeah, I've got my paper, Mara. He was there the time he was finished. He was doing the Lindela. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Aldrin, I can hear screams behind me. There's a lady that is crying um, on the other side of this van. I'm going to try and see what is happening here. Uh, what are the emotional scenes that are playing out here? You can hear there she's in the van. Why are you in this van? Yeah, 
I tell them, I tell them to take the decision, any decision. Yo, let, they, let me go die, my sister. You're not going to Lindella. Let me I can't go to Lindella. I can't go to Lindella. I'm suffering, my sister. I need protection only. I was running here with you, I need protection. I never ran to you, and Sarah to go to Lindella. I never ran to you, and Sarah to go to prison. I want to give you one, Sarah. I want protection for my kids. Where are your children? Where are your kids? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, let, let South Africa do whatever they want. It's better to die, my sister. My sister, it's better to die, my sister. My sister, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know where I'm gonna go. Aldrin, it's very painful. Even for us journalists who are here, who have to bring you this bitter story that is playing out here. You know, if you're human, there's no way you will not be touched by what is happening here. We're trying to move to another section to see what is happening at that particular stretch of uh, the road. Here's another group, this site. The lady that is in that uh, van is one who was living at this particular shelter right here. I spoke to her yesterday. I interviewed her right here. She was one of the people who was saying that she is not going to Lindella. That is exactly what she is repeating today, echoing the very same sentiment that she would rather die, but she's not going back to Lindella. I'm going to, you know, have a small walkabout here just for you to see the conditions in which these uh, refugees were living here, um, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse of what was happening here. There you can see one of uh, the uh, structures, one of uh, the uh, homes here. This is where they were living. Of course, uh, now all of this in a few hours will be gone. Um, we wonder where will all this go, their furniture? Um, will it be taken to a place where they can access it again? Or will it be destroyed? I see there's a young man here who's signaling. He wants to uh, speak to me to add his voice. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you feeling? Emotional. But all, all that I just wanted to say is that I just hope that when we are put into like the camp, the concentration camp in there, like prison, prison, that we must not be buried that's all I'm asking because I have a life. I want a life. I, I, I'm, I'm here because... How old are you? 20. I stopped school grade 11 because I didn't have papers. Papers were taken away from me. I came here when I was 2008, when I was 7. So once the papers were taken away from me, I had nothing. I, 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 I can't do anything. I, I don't know. Back home, I don't know. I don't know. I'm here. Where I'm are here. you from? Me, DRC. Where are your parents? Are they here? Where no, are your they, parents? They are forcefully taken from here, which you can see they broke in. Bah! Is that your mother crying in there? Yes, yes. The one that I just spoke to they in the van? They were dragging her. Not, not peacefully, they were dragging her. They were dragging her that side. So. How are you feeling? How did you feel when you saw your mother being dragged like that? I was crying. I was crying. I, I forced myself not to cry, but I was crying. I was crying. So. She's in that van. She's still crying. I just spoke to her now. She's very emotional. Are you worried about her? She doesn't want to go to Lindella. Um, obviously, it now means that you'll be separated from your mother. What happens to you now? I don't know. I don't know. Why is it that you guys do not want to go to Lindella? It's, it's, I'm asking so that not, you guys can share your reality yeah, with it's, us. It's not. It's not. It's, 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 it's not a nice place. Is it worse than here? One would say this is also not a nice place, taking the circumstances. At least, at least we have an option that they can hear us. They can, they can see us. At least they can see us. That's all. At least they can see us. That's all. At least they can see us. Many are asking when you are facing this extent of suffering in South Africa, 
Why are you not going back home? <laughs> the suffering that we were facing here, that side, it's going to be probably a hundred times worse. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I, I know I'm dead because I... I, I, I yeah, it's, it's death for me. I'm dead. So, at least... We're not asking for anything special. We don't want any... We just... Just give us the opportunity. Just give us... Just, just give us that. What opportunity are you looking for? Just... I just need... Give me what everyone has. And that is the legal to be in a country, to be protected. That's all I'm... Human rights. That's all I want. If I have that... I have, I, I don't need anything else. I don't need, I don't need charity. I just need papers to be protected. I just need to be, to, to know that where I am, I will not, I will not, I, I'm not illegal because right now, if they told me there's three options, go to Lindela prison, go to another prison or go back home, which means prison because I don't have papers, right? Every, anytime I'm caught, it's prison. So, okay not options it's just one option they're making it three but it's one option your mother is gone where are you going after this because you are also very clear you're not going to lindela what now how are you going to survive in the next couple of, couple of days weeks they, they told my mother that they're gonna arrest her right for what they don't know so they're gonna keep her just keep her just so she must not be able to be here me i have to go to lindela because i have to i have my brothers i don't want them to if i go to prison also i was gonna take care of them so i have to like go to lindela just because if i had an option if they were not here i was gonna also go with her to prison i was definitely gonna go with her to prison 100 percent. i'm not scared all right thank you so much aldrin we continue to keep a very keen eye on what is happening here as i said sensitive emotional human dignity human rights that is what is at play here and being interrogated because it is really a barrage of things that are happening at the same time and everyone is just wondering how will they survive that's the one but most importantly how will the children be protected what will be done to make sure that the children are not separated from their parents will there be enough done to make sure that the parents at least have access to their children and that unity is kept together but uh, we'll come back a little bit later with some more developments for now we toss it back to studio